guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another realistic reptile piece. Now it's been actually quite a while since I've made a realistic one. I think the last one was a commissioned iguana, but today we're going to be doing a knobtail Australian gecko. And this one was also a commission, so it won't be for sale, but if you guys like the pattern and everything, I might make some geckos for my shop. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so this gecko piece is going to actually be quite large. The person that commissioned me wants it to be about 24 inches long, so it's not going to be to scale of the actual creature we're making. So usually when I make realistic reptiles, I tend to make them life-size, but this one's not going to be the case. Also, the only clay piece that we're going to be making for this is going to be the head, and because the head is going to be really large, I need to try and make it as light as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out a thin layer of clay to drape over the tin foil that I'm going to use as the core of our clay head. So I'm going to do that, blend everything together, and just kind of work on a basic shape. And then the main detail for our gecko's face is going to be these really large eyes. I found these really nice glass ones that we can use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out some little balls. Well, they're not little. They're pretty large balls of clay. And I'm just going to squish them onto the sides of the head where I want the eyes to go. I'm going to kind of blend that in, place the eyes, and then we can start adding clay around them to make the eyelids. I'm going to spend a decent amount of time working on the eyes because I want the expression to look really nice. And again, they're kind of the main feature of the face for this piece. After that, I adjusted the length of the snout. It just looked a little bit too short comparing it to my references, so I just added a tiny bit more clay, reshaped the front of the face, and then started working on the shape of the mouth and the nostrils. And then once I had all the major details laid out and I liked the shape of everything, I'm going to start adding a little bit of texture using a dotting tool and then I'm also going to add a few lines here and there to make wrinkles. So I'm going to add that final bit of texture and then I'm going to bake our clay head in the oven for about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once our clay head is done baking, we can start working on the painting. So the first bit of painting that I'm going to do is I'm going to primer everything a solid white. This is the color that's going to be the underbelly of our gecko and then the rest of the colors we can add on top. So again, I'm just starting by painting everything white and then we'll slowly add colors to the top portion of the head. And then with the top portion of the head I found painting it, the easiest way to go about it was adding the lighter colors first, like the main color was yellow, and then slowly adding darker portions to it and then adding the dark markings to the face. Um, any shadows that I needed to add would be last and then if I needed to do any final highlights I can do that at the very end just kind of adjusting the colors that I need. Now with this piece we are going to be painting the body after we have everything put together so any colors that I'm using on the head I'm going to set aside that way I can use the same colors when we paint the body. It'll make blending everything together and making it look like one cohesive piece a lot easier than trying to remember what colors you used. So let's get started on the sewing. I have a pretty simple pattern for it. It mainly just has a top and bottom for the body, pieces of fabric for the legs, and we're also going to be doing poseable toes, so I have a pattern for the feet as well. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on getting the legs ready. So I have the fabric for the toes for all the feet. The back feet are gonna be slightly different than the front feet. And then the tops are going to be a orange fabric and the bottoms are going to be a white. So I have everything pinned together and we're just going to sew around these toes, cut the fabric out after we have it sewn and then flip the toes right side out and stuff them. And then the fabric for the legs, each leg has an inside portion which is going to be that white color that the belly is, and then the outside portion is going to be a sequence fabric. And the sequence fabric I have pinned to another layer of fabric and sewn together because it was a little sheer, so it's kind of like a double layer of fabric. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to pin the leg pieces together, and we're going to sew down the fronts of all four of the legs. And then after that, we're going to take our wire frame. I made one ahead of time, and we're gonna start putting our body together. First thing we'll do is we'll glue the head to the wire frame for the neck, and then we can take the fabric for the belly and the body, the neck portion of that, and glue that around the base of the head. You want to let it dry a little bit and then we're going to sew down both sides until we get to where we're going to add the front legs. You'll notice that the back of our gecko is also a sequence fabric just like our legs. So I'm going to take the fabric for the front legs, we're going to sew those in place, and then we're going to continue going down the sides of our gecko's body, closing it up and stuffing it as we go. And then when we get to where the back legs are gonna be connected, we're gonna sew those in place. Now remember, when you sew your fabric in place for the legs, make sure that you have that wire going through the leg. So you'll wanna have the wire for each leg going through the fabric portion where it opens up where you connect the fabric for the leg. So we're gonna finish closing up our body by sewing the rest of the tail and stuffing it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our feet to the wire frames. So the little plush toes that we made ahead of time, I ended up adding a wire frame to each foot. And basically we're gonna take the wire frame for that foot and we're gonna connect it to the wire for the leg. So we're gonna make sure we have everything the correct length that we need, because you don't want the wires for the legs longer than the actual legs themselves. We're gonna wrap those all together and then we can take the fabric for the legs and we can start connecting them to the feet. Once you have the feet in place, we can then stuff the rest of the legs and close them up. Once I have all the legs done, I'm then going to do a little bit of adjustments to the body, just adding a few stitches here and there to adjust the shape of it and then we can start on painting it. For the painting, we're going to kind of do it the same way that we did the head. We're going to start with our lighter colors first. I'm going to start with the feet first because I need the tops of the toes to actually be white. I realized this later. I should have had both sides of the feet white. It would have been a lot easier, but we can paint it and correct it, so it's no big deal. So we're going to get everything kind of painted and slowly add our colors. So like I said, I'm going to start with a white, I'm going to add yellows, we're going to slowly darken it, and there's actually a little bit more of a burgundy color to the body than there is on the head. So I will have to add a few extra colors that we didn't use on the head. And then one final detail, once that paint has dried, I'm gonna take a white 3D fabric paint and I'm going to add our little white dots that are on the top of the body. So I'm just gonna go along and follow where I believe all these dots need to be and place them and then of course these are gonna have to dry as well.
Okay guys, and here is our finished piece, our little knob-tailed Australian gecko. Well, he's not really little, he's a lot larger than he would be if he was real size, but I think he came out really cute. I love doing all these markings, I had so much fun with it. I need to do another realistic piece eventually, but I've been wanting to get a bit more into the fantasy pieces, so we'll see. Maybe I'll find a random creature that I want to do super realistic. But yeah, here is our gecko. And depending on when this video is live, if it's up before December 31st, I do have a holiday sale going on on my website. If you use the code HOLIDAY2021, you can get 35% off anything in my shop. I'll have the code next to the link if you guys forget. And then there's a bunch of other links down there as well to a bunch of different art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you're interested in making your own, you can check all of those things out. Now they are affiliate links, so if you do buy something through them, they do help support the channel. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!